live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Celebrating each other a decade after the waterfront closed down, one Rockford church hosts a party in its place. And blues and barbecue for a good cause. The event creating connections between police and the community. Plus, art in the park, celebrating local artists and showing off the pieces they create. Good evening, I'm Marissa Lesnar. Taylor is off tonight. A woman is accused of setting off a fire extinguisher multiple times. Police say she had several kids with her. Now they're trying to track her down. Janesville police say this woman was caught on camera expelling a fire extinguisher inside a parking ramp on Park Drive. It happened back on August 18th. Fire extinguishers are required by building code. While they are accessible to the public, police remind people you can only use them in case of emergency. If you know who this is, call police or leave a tip on the P3 app. Blues and barbecue started as a way to bring officers and the community together, but years later, it's grown to mean so much more. The annual festival in Settlers Park was originally just a fun time for people in Rockton. It was the police department's way of reaching out to those in the community. Now it's not only that, but also serves as a fundraiser. Part of the proceeds go to the Jamie Cox Memorial Scholarship as well as the Rockton Police Association Member Relief Fund, which will help out if there's any kind of tragedy in the area. Organizers say it's just another activity to bring officers and regular people closer together. Rockton in general is a huge police supporter. Um, it's great to see everyone come out, all the children, and just to get involved with everyone here. Along with kids' activities like face painting and a bounce house, Rockford's SWAT mobile unit was also out for people to check out. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office also did a canine demonstration. For years on Labor Day weekend, the west side of Rockford was packed with thousands coming down for on the waterfront. That ended 10 years ago, but now a west side church is trying to bring some of that fun back with an event called Park Fest. People are coming out today because they want to see Pastor Reese get dunked. Well, that might not be the only reason, but the pastor isn't afraid to get a little wet in the name of community. We're here for the community to make an impact, to strengthen our community, to come together and just have a day of fun and entertainment. The church near Pierpont in Cunningham has everything from free pony rides to a petting zoo, food trucks, bouncy houses and three-on-three -three basketball. Trinity Green came for the basketball, but was surprised to see so many other activities. It's something different. Not a lot of churches do a lot of things like this to bring the communities together. Pastor Reese says this is the biggest festival on the west side and says something like this is badly needed since On the Waterfront ended a decade ago. So we don't have carnivals, we don't have On the Waterfront, you know, and so this is a way that the community can come out and enjoy some entertainment and festivities. And even the youngest attendees are having fun. Uh, I like some friends and I like my sisters. You met some friends? Yes. You still have a little bit of time to get out there. Park Fest wraps up at 6 p.m. The Rockford area music industry is holding a waterfront reunion concert tonight, 10 years after, and on the waterfront reunion starts at 6 at the Tabala Event Center. Money raised from the event will help support local music scholarships. For the past 15 years, Freeport's Crepe Park turns into an art showcase. The Freeport Park District and Art Museum joined forces to put on art in the park today. Festgoers got a chance to see works from local artists as well as free activities for kids. The Art Museum's executive director says she's excited to keep up the tradition. What I really like about this year's event, um, and it's something that we, tr we strive for every year, is we have some new artists that are joining us this year, and we have a, a good number of returning artists. And uh, we always have a wide variety of art that people can expect to see. Jessica says they get three to 4,000 people for the One Day Fine Arts Festival. Millions of borrowers who will get student loan debt relief may end up with a tax bill, including those in Wisconsin. Some states will tax the ten or twenty thousand dollars in forgiven loans as income. So, depending on a state's tax rate and the taxpayer's other income, 
plus deductions or exemptions they can claim, a borrower could end up paying several hundred extra tax dollars. Illinois borrowers will not pay extra taxes. Labor Day weekend is the unofficial end to summer, and doctors say it's already time to talk about getting the flu shot. Every flu season is different. It all depends on the strain of the flu that will be prevalent during the season. Doctors with OSF Healthcare recommend talking to your primary care doctor this month so you're ready to make an appointment by October. This is even more important for seniors and people with underlying health conditions. Every year the flu is different. So the vaccines are designed to so that they attack that particular flu strain. So it's key that you get it every year. Doctors remind you the flu shot can give you headaches, muscle aches, or other minor symptoms, but not having any side effects doesn't mean the immunization isn't effective. For the first time since before COVID, Rockford will have a Labor Day parade. The annual event that snakes through downtown was canceled the last two years because of the pandemic, but tomorrow morning families can line the streets get ready to celebrate the holiday weekend. The parade kicks off at 7th Street and Railroad Avenue at 10 a.m. It goes north to East State across the bridge and then turns onto Wyman, then ends at Davis Park. Road closures will begin at 9. Welcome back. The search continues tonight for a missing school teacher in Memphis, Tennessee. Eliza Fletcher was kidnapped early Friday morning while out on a run. Police have made an arrest, but there's still no sign of Fletcher. As Mola Lange reports, her family is pleading for help. Memphis police announcing they have made an arrest in the case of missing Memphis school teacher Eliza Fletcher. Possible abduction earlier today for Ms. Liz Fletcher. 38 year old Cleotha Abstin has been charged with especially aggravated kidnapping and tampering with evidence. The 34 year old kindergarten teacher was reported missing by her husband hours after she did not return from an early morning jog Friday. It's now been a number of hours since they detained an individual that was in the car allegedly used in this abduction. I have real concerns about her well being because it's just been too long. Abstin's arrest coming a day after investigators revealed they had located a vehicle of interest in Fletcher's abduction. Police say a person in a black GMC Terrain SUV approached her around 4.30 a.m. while she was jogging near the University of Memphis and forced her into the passenger side of the vehicle. Authorities saying they found her water bottle and cell phone near where she was reportedly abducted. ABC affiliate WATN confirming the married mother of two is the granddaughter of a prominent businessman and philanthropist. Her family pleading for the public's help. More than anything, we want to see Liza returned home safely. The family has offered a reward for any information that leads to her safe return. Saturday evening, her church held a vigil. We're deeply pained and sorrowed by what's going on, and we're praying for her safe return. Police say they have arrested a second person, an apparent relative of Abstin, who is now facing gun and drug charges, but authorities do not believe he is connected to Fletcher's abduction. Mola Lange, ABC News, Memphis. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, the cloud cover has been pretty thick for us for much of this morning, afternoon, something that will continue here as we go through the night tonight. We may have had a few breaks in the cloud cover enough, especially south of Rockford, to give us maybe a little bit of light out there, but we continue with that overcast sky. A live look with our SkyTrack camera now down in Rochelle, kind of looking off to the northwest. An abundance of cloud cover as an area of low pressure spins down to the south. That's where we've got the rain and even the thunderstorms here over the last couple of hours, and we'll continue here through this evening. Evening, but as that moisture is kind of pulled a little further north from time to time, you may have noticed a little drizzle or kind of some mist out there over the last couple of hours. That can be expected here as we go through the rest of this evening as well as going into the night tonight. Temperatures as a result have not warmed up much. It has been a very fall like feel compared to what we had out there yesterday. So with that low pressure system down to the south, that wind flows counterclockwise. So we've had kind of that cool northeast breeze coming right in off of Lake. Michigan. We've also got the moisture wrapping in around that low, trapped kind of in the lower part of the atmosphere. So when we take kind of a snapshot of what's going on from the surface all the way up to above, down here at the surface, you've got a lot of moisture kind of stuck in the lower levels. When you look at your temperature line and your dew point line, when they're right together or right on top of each other, you know you've got a lot of moisture. 
drier air is definitely found up above, but unfortunately that drier air not able to work down here towards the surface. So that's why we've been pretty cloudy throughout the day and still with the remnants of that low down to the south through the day tomorrow. While it might not be quite as thick as what we've had this afternoon, I do think we end up with a mostly cloudy sky. Temperatures, take a look at these numbers. It's been chilly today. 65 in Monroe. You're at 67 in Freeport. 70 in Rockford, Janesville. Down to 69 in Rochelle and 68. Our current temperature in uh, DeKalb. 67 for our weather watcher Mike just north of Forest in there. A lot of cloud cover. No rain today. 68 for our weather watcher Jim here in Rockford. That dew point temperature also up. So while it's been cool, it's kind of been a damp, almost muggy, cool feeling. And that is something that will continue through the day tomorrow as well. So here we go with future cast getting up tomorrow morning. You've got a little fog. I think we could see that develops underneath that cloud cover with that northeasterly wind. We keep with the cloud cover. I don't think we really see any drizzle. Maybe early on the small chance for a little drizzle out there, but no rain showers are expected for our Monday. Future cast clears us out. I think we hold on to some of that cloud cover through the afternoon. Temperatures back into the mid 70s for tomorrow. So falling below average, that average high should be right around 79. We do pull in a little more cloud cover once again during the day on Tuesday. Small chance for a shower or thunderstorm to pop up for the afternoon. Still looking at temperatures in the upper 70s before high pressure settles in. Kind of helps get rid of some of that moisture. And then we see more sunshine here for the middle to latter half of the week. So 68 degrees, that's where we end up for tonight. Winds will stay from the northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperature tomorrow will end up near 77. Still kind of that damp and muggy feel for our Labor Day, but you're going Going out enjoying some of the festivities that may be going on across town. Just a jacket. You're not going to have to worry about those getting rained out. Some of our hometown numbers here as we look across the area. Temperatures in the lower 60s, back into the 70s. 76 year high in Freeport. Byron, same thing in Beloit. 74 the high temperature down there in Ashton. We keep with those lower 60s Tuesday night going into Wednesday, but we should see a little more sunshine as we go throughout the day on Wednesday afternoon. Temperatures will make it back into the 80s. Mid 80s by the time we get to Towards Thursday, Friday, a little southerly breeze. But things change a little bit, Marissa, here as we look into the weekend. We've got an area of low pressure and a cold front that pull in a little more moisture. And notice that drop in temperatures. We can definitely kind of have a prolonged kind of fall feel a little bit going into early next week. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. The Chicago Sky are one game closer to a second straight WNBA Finals appearance, and Game 3 today was gritty on both sides of the court for the Sky. Second quarter, Sky down by 6, Emma Miesemann finds Candace Parker, and she'll drain the 3. A few plays later, Parker returns the favor, and she'll kick it to Miesemann, and well, she'll nail one. Sky go on an 8-0 run to end the first half. Fourth quarter now, Sky lead by two. Parker will stuff up Dewana Bonner on the layup attempt. And on the other end, Miesemann will pull up for the jumper and she'll knock it down. She finished with 13 points today. It was wire to wire the whole game, but the Sky wins 76 to 72 and now lead the series 2 to 1. I was proud of us in the way that we made adjustments, you know, both individually and team de defense. And I think down the stretch, uh, we were able to kind of play to that. And um, I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, sometimes, especially in years past, we would play great defense and then we would give up the offensive board um, and we were able to finish the play. The White Sox were in action today for one more with the Twins. But before we get to those highlights, we have to talk about Dylan Cease and his blockbuster performance last night in Game 2. Cease got a huge standing ovation when he came out to start the ninth. The Cease chants were rolling around guaranteed rate field. He came within just one out of his first career no-hitter. The heartbreaker came in the ninth, though, when Luis Arreyes clipped one out to right center field and it would fall for the base hit. Cease pitched a complete game shutout and got the win with seven strikeouts, the longest outing of his career. But to be that close to making history and falling short has to be just a little disappointing. You can't ever uh, take a pitch off. Not that I did take one off there, but um, it's not over till it's over. So, um, you know, he, I'm sure he wanted to end it as much as I wanted it. So, um, you know, good for them and uh, yeah, good win for us. 
Now for game three today on the south side, fifth inning, no score. Carlos Correa at bat. He'll get this one swinging, and it'll go deep left center field, and it's all the way gone. Tin Twins will twa tally on two runs to take the lead to the seventh now. White Sox looking for another Leary Garcia with the bunt, but Twins will pitch it perfectly and tap out Adam Hassley. Eighth inning now, same score. Kendall Graveman will send this one outside. Catcher, though he can't make the play, and Max Kepler will come around to score off that wild pitch. Twins will add two more in the ninth and avoid the sweep, winning 5-1. to one. The Cubs looking for any kind of momentum they could get today with the Cardinals, but they would not be able to convert. They drop this one 2-0. to zero. Next up, the Cubs will travel back home to Wrigley for a three-game series with the Reds. That starts Tuesday. The Brewers could use this win to split the series with the Diamondbacks. Arizona has the lead by three runs in the seventh right now. Well, not the best Labor Day weekend for those of us who really wanted to be at the pool. <laughs> yeah, you know, yesterday we had showers and thunderstorms, but it was kind of split across the area. Yeah. So while some folks dealt with some pretty heavy rainfall, others for most of the afternoon, mostly south of here, had a pretty decent day. And today yeah. it's been kind of cloudy, cool, uh, but not necessarily rainy. We've been stuck underneath those low clouds that will continue here for this evening. Rain showers while we have some drizzle out there, really going to hold off until next weekend. Temperatures, they gradually climb by the end of the week. That's going to do it for us. Have a great night. Yeah.